In South Africa, rugby is so important that it's been used on numerous occasions as a political tool to try and bring together a fractured nation. The great Nelson Mandela saw rugby as a way to help lessen divisions between black and white South Africans and foster a shared national pride post-apartheid. However, to some, the Springbok jersey still symbolises the nation's historic oppressive minority white rule. The first rugby match played in South Africa took place in 1862 in Cape Town. However, it wouldn't be until 1896 until the national side recorded their first test victory. Fast forward almost 130 years and South Africa are the reigning world champions and have won the World Cup on three occasions, equaling the All Blacks for the most titles in history. Bearing in mind they were kept out of the sport's first two World Cups in 87 and 91 as a punishment due to the apartheid, it makes the achievement even more impressive. From the outset, rugby's brought South Africans together. Merely half a decade after the British had thrown Afrikaners into concentration camps, the two groups played alongside one another under the Springbok banner. The sport also facilitated social interaction amongst the various religious groups of the country's black inhabitants. Today, rugby is vastly popular in South Africa, boasting over 405,000 registered players, which is the second most in the world after France, 1,500 rugby clubs and over 10 million engaged fans. But how did the South Africans become so dominant in the sport? Well, it'd be appropriate to say that rugby is in the DNA of South Africans. Right from school to club level, there is extraordinary infrastructure for the game, with excellent grounds, coaching facilities and opportunities. Historically, the Africana white-only schools use rugby as a platform to showcase their physical prowess, internationally and domestically. In a country with limited job opportunities and a struggling economy, becoming a professional rugby player is a guaranteed ticket to success and an opportunity to obtain a secure future. This video is brought to you by Manscaped, the very best in men's below the belt grooming. They're offering all viewers of this video 20% off their entire product range and free worldwide shipping with the code RUGBYPOD. That includes the Lawnmower 4.0 package. So go and use the code RUGBYPOD at checkout at manscaped.com. Trust us, your balls will thank you and we can make more videos like this. Unlike other countries, the South African school, college and university rugby system is treated essentially as professional, in all but name, and hence has become the main springboard of opportunity for young players to impress. A big part of the success of schoolboy rugby is Craven Week, which began in 1964 in order to give schoolboys the necessary training of a higher standard than school rugby and to scout players to move into provincial level. The 14 provincial unions pick players from schools in their district for each age group level team and these teams then play against each other over a week. The competition has since become a hunting ground for talent scouts trying to find the best new players for their promises and many young upcoming stars see the tournament as an opportunity to further their careers. If this doesn't give you a taste of how seriously rugby is taken in South Africa, then maybe the fact that they've got numerous dedicated rugby channels showing club, university and school rugby as well as the professional clubs gives you an idea of how much the people love it. A school match last year, for example, between Paul Roos and Grey College was attended by over 16,000 people. That's over twice the average attendance at a premiership match. University rugby is also vitally important. Even for those who don't make it professionally, uni rugby is still taken incredibly seriously, with each university having its own league, house team, age division and academy. However, at every level, from the lush private school pitches at the heart of youth rugby to the country's professional leagues, South African rugby is still white dominated. In a country that's 90% black, just eight black players are part of the 23-man squad in the World Cup final. Sadly, another issue which has come about due to the level of importance thrust in rugby is the steroid epidemic at South African schools. With so many craving to become professional rugby players due to the absurd amount of money on offer and also the scholarship opportunities at private schools, there is an enormous incentive to excel, to be faster, bigger, stronger, better. However, ex-Springbok coach Nick Mallett believes that there's no need for doping when naturally the overriding majority of current professional South African players already have such a God-given physical advantage. For Mallett, it's no coincidence that the Springboks pack have down the years been dominated by Afrikaner players at the expense of not just black players, but also English-speaking players. And the fact is, he argues, the Afrikaner culture group just seems to produce some freakishly built people with a freakish genetic makeup. Whatever it is that may or may not give South Africans an advantage on field, it's clear to see that this is a country obsessed with rugby. It's become part of their DNA throughout their history and has shaped a unique culture. Undoubtedly, the country's success on the international stage, especially at World Cups, has helped to unify the country and allowed millions of people to fall in love with the game. But the hope that a potential life-changing professional contract gives to millions of school kids up and down the country 
is perhaps most pertinently why the popularity of the game continues to soar. Last but not least, who can forget Mandela's influence on the sport? Mandela did not change the game of rugby or the Springbok symbol himself. He changed the meanings attached to it, and in doing so, opened up the sport to the whole of South Africa, making them a stronger force both on and off the pitch.